All right. Welcome to fifth grade. Uh, so today we're going to talk about European conquests of Latin America. All right. Your notes uh, for this style, what I would like you to do is look at uh, the red point. The blue underneath it are just that. Uh, they're the sub points. Okay. Sub, not sub. All right. And those are kind of the supporting details. All right. So when you're taking your notes, just remember that the red is the main topic, the main point, um, and then the the blue or the sub points are the supporting details uh, for that topic. All right, here we go. All right, uh, so we talked a little bit about when the Europeans arrived. Just to, we touched on it a little bit before, uh, but now we're going to get into greater detail. Um, the reason why the Europeans are venturing out so much is that they're looking for new trade routes to Asia. Well, why? Because Asia holds really valuable. Um, commodities such as spices and silk. Okay? And the Europeans know that they can sell these for a great profit. So what they did was all these different European nations were trying to figure out ways to uh, get to Asia. Uh, a lot of them would sell south uh, around Africa and come back up. But that was like a six to eight month journey. It took a really long time. So this guy by the name of Columbus, uh, this Italian sailor, thought that if I sailed west, maybe I could get to Asia quicker, not knowing that um, there was a big landmass uh, in his way. Everybody knew that the world was round um, at this time, most educated people did, but they didn't know exactly how big it was. So Columbus thought, if I sailed west, I could beat the rest of the people there. It's got to be shorter than going all the way around Africa and coming back up. So in 1492, he finally arrived uh, in the Americas. And then a big dispute uh, between Spain and Portugal erupts, and uh, we have this treaty. And basically what this treaty says is that there's a line that runs all the way from the north to south pole at 50 degrees west, and it's called the line of demarcation. And the, the short of it is basically Spain could settle any land west of that line and trade with them while Portugal got everything east of that line. Okay, So this kind of is going to um, cause some problems later on in history. But we're not getting into those right now. Okay. Uh, so what does that mean um, for Spain? Well, Spain's kind of smart in that they're not going to hire all these different explorers. Instead, what they do is they give permission for them to go and explore their land. All right. And so they set out these conquistadors. All right. And basically, what they tell the conquistadors is you have the right to hunt for any treasure and settle and settle whatever colonies you would like, as long as you pay us one fifth of what you find really easy for Spain. They make a fifth of what the conquistadors find and they don't have to pay for explorers. Okay, It's a pretty good deal. The conquistadors on the other hand have to make a little bit of a sacrifice at first but so many of them get so rich so quickly uh, that it's really all worth it. Okay, um, Which leads us to two really main, uh, really main important conquistadors. The first of them was Cortez uh, and basically we'll get more into this in class but Cortez um, gets armies together and ends up defeating the mighty Aztecs, which ruled for hundreds of years uh, in 1521. And then another conquistador a few years later by the name of Pizarro sails down to uh, Peru and ends up capturing and killing all of the Incan leaders and taking over the great Incan Empire, right? Yeah, no, this is not some story tale um, thing that you may read if you're younger. This is a very ruthless time in history. Um, a lot of people killing for no reason whatsoever. They could have gone about it different ways, but for the most part, the Spanish were very ruthless, killed a lot of people, innocent people, um, to get what they wanted. Okay, uh, So within these 15 years, uh, from the time that uh, Cortez, or from the time that Columbus comes in 1492 uh, to the time that Pizarro's done, which it's more than 15 years, but pretty much within 15 years of Cortez and Pizarro um, coming to uh, Latin America, the conquistadors have basically defeated what it took the Aztecs and Incans hundreds of years to build. Okay. How did they do this? Well, a couple ways. Uh, they had guns and horses uh, and cannons which were far superior to what the Incans and Aztecs had, which their most, um, their most advanced weapon was probably the bow and arrow. Uh, but the biggest one is this right here, which are diseases, okay? 
Uh, Native Americans did not have immunity to smallpox, measles, or chickenpox. You know, when you're born, you get a measles and smallpox shot so that you don't uh, get those later on in life. So it, uh, you know, it ended up being that these diseases are what wiped out hundreds of thousands of Native American peoples. Well, it wasn't really even Cortez or the fighting. Um, it was these diseases. All right. So here's a map. Uh, this red dotted line represents the line of demarcation. Don't worry about Columbus and Cortez's and Pizarro's expeditions. Uh, just realize that you know this line right here is what separated or allowed um, Spain to conquer all this land over here, while the Portuguese were only allowed this small chunk over here. Hence why uh, Brazil speaks Portuguese, while the rest of uh, South America and Latin America up here central and Mexico and the Caribbean all speaks a uh, dialect of, of Spanish. Okay. The last thing that we're going to talk about with this is colonization. All right. So by the 1600s, so remember Spain or Columbus came over in 1492, so not even 200 years after uh, you know, it was like what 150, we'll say 150 years. No, not even 150, 110 years later. Um, Spain, Portugal, France, and England all have laid claim to some land territory uh, within Latin America. Okay? Uh, most of the people who settled there were missionaries uh, from the Catholic Church. Others were, other people who settled were looking for gold and minerals because, again, they hear these great tales of all these you know, cities made of gold and all these myths and stuff that don't exist. And so they come over looking for those, looking for gold, end up finding other minerals instead. And some people ended up coming over just to farm uh, in the land, okay? But the missionaries here, you gotta understand, these are from the Catholic Church, and basically the Catholic Church gives them an ultimatum, is basically either convert these barbarians, because, you know, if they weren't Catholic, then they must be barbarians, um, into Christianity or, or make them suffer the consequence, which you can see down here, um, they can kill them, basically. I mean, that was the consequence. Either convert, do what we want you to, or die. All right. Um, so, all these explorers created these colonies for um, for the motherland, as we call mother countries, to help them uh, gain more wealth. Okay, that was the main purpose of this: sell these colonies, find the resources, find lands, so that we can create more money for our economies and become richer. All right. And throughout this. Um, Spain develops a social class within um, Latin America, all right? And so, you know, a social class, you can think of it as a pyramid, all right? Like this, all right? Where at the top, there are very few people, and then as you go down the line, you get more and more and more people, okay? So if we look over here, uh, the proced or not the pre I keep telling them procedios, uh, the peninsulares, all right? These are the people who basically run all of the Latin, all of Spain's land, okay? And they are born in Spain, all right? That's the only way it can be a peninsular is if you're born in Spain because you're called a peninsular because Spain is a peninsula, <laughs> all right? And then after that, you have Creoles, okay, who are of Spanish descent, but they were born in the Americas. So if your mom and dad came over as peninsulares, you would be a Creole, okay? All right, and so they make up a larger portion, but not that large. A majority of the people were mestizos, all right? Which, go here, mestizos, okay? And they are half European, but also half Native American slash African, all right? And then the last group that we have are the Native Americans or Africans who they bring over as slaves, okay? So that's really the social class of the Latin American colonies. Okay, so this all sets up, all this colonization sets up what we call the Columbian Exchange, all right? And within the Columbian Exchange, um, you have goods that were grown over here in North and South America that are shipped back over to Europe, Africa, and Asia to sell in markets and also to grow. Um, potatoes is a big, uh, you know, Ireland over here is a big producer of potatoes um, because these are all things that they didn't have over here, all right? So they're high. You can sell them for a high price and make a large profit off of them. In the meantime, you know, look at the size of Europe compared to North America and South America, all right? So you got all this, this tiny country over here, this tiny continent, and they need to grow and expand, all right? They're growing and expanding exponentially at this point. So 
And they bring over livestock. They bring over different grains. They bring over sugar cane, bananas, grapes, peaches, oranges, lemons, <laughs> all right? All these different fruits and, and vegetables and grains and, and livestock that we don't have over here, all right? Look at what it is, you know? And Florida grows a bunch of this stuff. Uh, California grows a bunch of this stuff. You, know, you could drive down the street and see cows and cattle and sheep and pigs and horses. Okay? All those came from Europe. They didn't originate over here in the Americas. All right. So we get this circle, this circle of exchange here that you can see of different things. The one bad thing that they did bring over were all these different diseases. Okay. Imagine if the Europeans had not come over here. One, we probably wouldn't be here. Um, we'd all be Native American in descent. Uh, the second thing is a lot of these diseases that we have that we have to get shots against and stuff all came over with the Europeans when they came over to conquer. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to bring them to class. Otherwise, uh, we'll talk about it later.